another edition of Singer Soapbox, episode five. I'm Jessica. And I'm David. And we're here with, we'll get there, hold on. <laughs> we're here with another edition of the Singer Soapbox from Dynamic Fine Arts Academy. And joining us tonight is Mr. Doug Rice. Send hello to the people, Doug. Hello to the people. <laughs> sorry I cut you off. No, sorry. Very rude. Um, tonight we are going to be talking about performance anxiety, personal experience sharing, um, uh, let's see, what else do we have? First, we're going to be sharing our personal experience with it. Um, we're going to look at it from an instrumental and vocal perspective. Doug is a, a band teacher at Union High School. He's a band director with his lovely wife, Cassie, and she's fabulous. Hi, Cassie, we miss you. Um, and he's going to be sharing an instrumental perspective, and uh, David's going to be sharing a vocal perspective. So we also have some coping strategies to kind of tie it all up so welcome thank you for being here yeah. Please, just so, give us what you know right on so like the first thing I guess that we need to really address is what is performance anxiety and you know it's basically most people would call it stage fright it's just what you, you you know different things that you feel whenever you get up in front of somebody to perform or uh, to talk in front of people even um, Doug how would you yeah, it. it's it's being not in the place where you are. You're worried about other things, uh, so you you feel like you're uh, feel like you can't perform, or you feel like you uh, you're not going to do as well. It just kind of it sinks in and it kind of takes over. Instead of performing, you get thinking about the act of what you're doing, and that's not where your brain needs to be. Yeah, and it, in your experience, how does this manifest and show up? With uh, my student, for well, we're not talking about me, but for the students that I teach, a lot of it is you'll get um, cr uh, crying, I, <laughs> you'll get uh, sweating, you'll get uh, mistakes that they don't normally make. Uh, you'll get, uh, in fact, a lot of times it's you'll get stuff that they do really well that they don't normally do well, kind of like out of their out of their realm <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, but it, it's. It, it, it's some sometimes you, you see kids and uh, people who perform they get they get through it pretty quick and sometimes it's 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 pretty uh, uh, quick sandy you yeah know, if you you kind of get into it and you feel like you can't get out of it yeah so yeah. I, it, you know a lot of it comes down to preparation and we talked about this before you know the the more prepared you are the the better time you're well and just knowing what it is because everybody's not the same you know, everybody responds to anxiety in a performance situation differently. Like you said, all those things, uh, not everybody has all those. You know, some people might just have the sweating. Some people might heart just, rate. you know, the heart rate increases. And, that, you know, shortness to an extent, yeah, shortness of breath. To an extent, everybody experiences a little bit of that, I would say. Yeah. But, but it's a motivator, too. It's not all bad. It's just when it kind of takes over your performance that becomes an issue. Yeah, I... I the students I talk to that are worried about it or I see them having it because a lot of times it shows up just playing for me in a, in a lesson or in a, in a like a, a small group I see them kind of start to tense up and I'm like hey everybody's got this that's just yeah. the people that you see perform they've they know how to manage it they know what's going to happen and a lot of times it's so smooth how they manage it that mm -hmm. it looks like they don't have it you know. Right. I find that if I change my mindset, like when I'm getting ready to get on stage and perform for however many people, if I look at it as a, a situation of, you know, I walk in there and instead of, oh man, all these people are judging me, it's more like I'm here to teach them something. I'm here, like I treat it like I'm with my students mm -hmm. at school. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think about it as I'm here to, to give them something that's going to help them or enlighten them or uplift them or something like that. And a lot, a lot of times the in some of my personal experience, but in some of the literature I've read, it's students or performers, they get into a place in their brain that isn't the act of performing. Like right. performing is this thing, and they're worried about other things. And it's as simple as um, my, like if I'm an instrumentalist, my key's clicking. And you're not thinking about performing, you're thinking about your key clicking. Or did I tie my shoe? I mean, you can go that far, or mm -hmm. is my hair in the right place? Uh, I've got uh, dust on my glasses, all of those things. And that takes you away from the act of performing. And anything that's going to take you away from the act, there's a chance that because you're not focused on it, you're going to make a mistake. Right. And then if you make that mistake, you feel like 
what just happened, and now mm. you're thinking about the mistake, and now right. it, it just kind of avalanches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So, like, as far as uh, you know, we've been talking mainly about vocal stuff here, but as far as comparing vocal versus instrumental, uh, do you see differences? And in- yeah, the. There, there's a positive, and I was telling you the other day, there's a positive and negative to having an instrument in front of you. But there's also a positive and negative to being able to use your voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people have not been using their instrument, their saxophone or their clarinet or their drum set or whatever, since they were born. Yeah. Right. But you have been using your voice since you were born. Right. But when you're on stage, if you're using your voice, there's nothing to blame it on but your voice. It's you. Yeah, you're there. It's so yeah. you're like so exposed, you right. know. It's just so like, mm-hmm. whoa, it's yeah. right. That's it. Like that's all you got. So. You're, you're more you're more comfortable using the tool, but there's no there's the only excuse is that you made a mistake using the tool. Right. But if I'm, if I'm sitting behind a tuba or if I'm sitting behind a trumpet or a saxophone, there's always that, and you you tend not to want to use this very often, but there's always that it there's a there's a comfort there where well, it could be the saxophone. Even though most of the time it's not, it's still you. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but you you have that you have that thing. So it's kind of a, a double edged sword there. Yeah. Well, and you know, speaking from my my perspective, you know, I'm well. Both of us actually have, do both. You know, all three of us have. Done well, both. we've done. We, we're <laughs> we're instrumentalists and vocalists. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we kind of see both sides of it. You know, and whenever whenever I was in in high school. Uh, you know, I took trombone, I was telling you about this, I took trombone solo to a contest my senior year, and the memorization got me, and now you don't have to do that, you don't have to memorize it, but at the time you did, and I just blanked out, you know, like halfway through the second movement, and I just had to leave, I got like a four at contest, I know they're not doing those numbers anymore, but it wasn't good, you know, it was a terrible experience, and it, it, it all came down to, really, to, that was preparation, you know, if I'd have been more pre- prepared and more memorized, then I wouldn't have had to uh, worry about missing something. And like you said, once you miss one note, yeah, yeah, it just snowballs because yeah. you think about well, what you did. And plus, like, you remember that. Like, you're holding on to yeah. that. And so, like, performance anxiety isn't just about what's happening in the moment. It's mm-hmm. about how it affects you yeah, from happened. there on out. Like, yeah. and the fact that you can hold on to that and remember that says that, you know, I don't, I don't want to use the word traumatized. It was impactful. Yes, yeah. yes, it was. It was. It, it made a, a an impression. So yeah, the the I don't my I have personal stories on both sides. Like I, the only one I remember is waiting for my senior recital to happen in college. Uh, oh gosh, that was awful. Like because <laughs> you know it's at like three yeah. o'clock or whatever, and you have you don't have anything planned that day because it's like the biggest moment of your college music right. major career. And I remember waiting, and I remember I don't, I know, I knew the things I didn't want to do. I didn't want to play too much, Mm -hmm. but I didn't want to play too little. And I didn't want to eat, and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't, I I didn't want to get cold. I didn't want to break my reed, you know, all these things. And um, then there was that I'm backstage before I go on to play that first piece. And it's like, there's a lot of tension there and a lot of what's going to happen and how is it going to happen. And I think I'm prepared. Am I prepared? And you start going through that. And for me, luckily, I go out and I'm nervous up till the moment. And then once I start to do, I'm I'm okay. Yeah. It it can pretty much kind of, I've been in, I've been in a couple of situations where I feel like I'm going to make more mistakes, but I'm, I'm lucky enough. And then I went to, I had a concert I prepared for in graduate school and I went in and I was cool as a cucumber. The rehearsal before, I had a great rehearsal and I'm ready to go. And I was just like, whatever, we're going to have a great concert. And man, that was the worst concert <laughs> I ever had because I didn't have that. And we talked about uh, adrenaline. Which, adrenaline. Yeah. Uh, what, if, you, if you can use that adrenaline, it actually amplifies your, your performance. Mm-hmm. Wow. And anything, in an, in a, in a, if you know how to use it. In an interview, in a in a presentation situation, and music, uh, you, if you know how to use it, it, it amplifies. You, you can do things that you didn't think you could do, and uh, that that's unfortunately you only get about 10, 15 minutes of that adrenaline, and yeah. after that, it's gone for like the rest of the day. So you have to yeah. be very careful about it. Yeah, and some of the the reading I was just doing recently on this, they were they were talking about how some people who experience really bad performance anxiety, they'll, they'll take medication 
you know, to try to to try to deal with these these feelings. Avoid but that. Avoid but yeah, we don't you don't want to do that no. if you can help it. No. Uh, but it, but at the same time, it was saying in this article how when you do that, it, it it's a, a lot of times has the effect of making your performance worse because you don't have. You can't the call. wherewithal to to make decisions on the fly. You can't you call know? on that extra energy. Either. Yeah, yeah, because you're just you're going out there with nothing mm -hmm. to give. You know, yeah. find find a healthier way to, <laughs> yeah. to deal with it because medication is not the answer if you can avoid it. And, and really, really, the I, the students that I have, I never tell them to go get medication, so that's good. <laughs> that's probably but good. The students that I have, that I, I I tell them, hey, the only way that you can get over performance anxiety is to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Know how your body's going to react and do it more often. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And and that do it more often is the part that nobody likes. Right. <laughs> right. right. Like, what do you mean I have to go through this more? Yeah, you have to go through that and that what what is your body gonna do when you perform? Like you guys know I know what my body does and I know that sometimes I need to amp myself up. You and you guys mm -hmm. have told me that sometimes you have to kind of pull it back. But if you know what's going to happen, that's that's a big part of it. Yeah, you had, practicing is not just about your instrument. Like it's about practicing your performance too. If yeah. you have if you have the performance opportunity, take it because that's just going to help you in the long run. Even if you totally bomb it and fail, like at least you know, okay, here's what I need to work on. If you can remember it and it wasn't too much in the moment, but absolutely. But in in most cases, when you bomb it. Nobody else in the room can do what you're doing. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I don't. So, yeah. so if you're a flute player and you're giving a flute recital and it's a bunch of parents and you know other kids that don't play flute, you're the only person in the room that can play flute. Yeah. Uh, so if that's right. You're doing it better than everybody in the room, and that's a perspective shift. Uh, if if you're thinking, oh, I made that mistake. What if they heard that? What if they heard that? What? If... You're playing a flute. Yeah. Nobody else can do that. And that's so, why I appreciate the fact that we're talking about this tonight because I think. Like even for like non musicians, it's it's really hard to imagine what this is all like. Like it, it's really easy to see someone get up there on stage and just, hey, well, look, here's a song, you know. But then there's oh. so many things going through their head at that moment mm -hmm. that people don't realize. There's so much to think about, and that's I mean we talk yeah. about how singing is a mental game like all the time, and I know banding is the same way. Right. Like <laughs> it's my new verb. A lot and so. a lot a lot of people in uh, our society, the people you see on on screens every day. Uh, or even on the radio, you hear them. They they make it look very easy. They make performing look very easy, and that's because they have done it more often and they're prepared for it. Right. And, yeah. And 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 a lot of them are super duper talented, but they've done it before and they make it look easy. So when you struggle with it, you don't see any examples of that, mm -hmm. and that's really hard to take. Uh, but it, I I think people in the business world, if you're given a presentation. Um, if you're in the job market and you're interviewing, it's the same type of feeling yep. you would get before you, like waiting for my senior recital would be the same as waiting for a job interview out in the lobby. Or surgery. Or a surgery, yeah, it's the same <laughs> That's thing. That's how I feel about yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, it's surgery, they just put you to sleep so you don't remember it. <laughs> yeah. But they can't do that Once if again, you're a recital. Again, <laughs> I want to interrupt this just for a second. If you guys have any performance anxiety stories that you care to share in the comments or you have questions mm -hmm. that you want answered later, we'll be happy to answer those. Feel free to post it at any time and we'll catch up with you at some point. So yeah, sure. um, we would really appreciate the the talk and chit chat. So yeah. please do. Yeah. And so to kind of shift gears a little, we've kind of touched on this, but you know, we kind of talked mostly about what is performance anxiety, but now we'd like to shift gears and kind of talk about, you know, some ideas for coping uh, with these feelings that you might be having. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of, one of the big things, and you'll hear uh, athletes use this too, is visualization. You know, before you go do your performance, you got to go there in your head. You got to think about what's it going to be like? What am I going to face? That way when you get there, there's less unknowns because you, you've played out all these different scenarios in your head. And you know how you're going to deal with them if they happen. Yeah, just uh, I was talking about the Olympics today, and that if you look at gymnasts specifically, uh, and even sometimes runners, but gymnasts, you can see them if you're watching the Olympics, and you can see them on the side, and they're you know they're doing all these things, and they're they're kind of you can see them doing these weird moves, and you're like, what is that for? What they're doing is they're going through their routine mm -hmm. in their mind, and they're visualizing themselves probably being successful doing the routine. And, and and going through that and they know they're first re reinforcing what they practice but they're also yeah. kind of visualizing it in the arena that they're in 
I had my daughter's a acrobat, nine year old acrobat, and that's what they did. They had like warm up times and they kind of they didn't do any of the actions. They just kind of walked through it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's a really great preparation thing. Yeah, if you can put yourself in the space, that's just going to make you that much more yeah, successful to really feel it out and see like where you should stand, how you should be, and where's the sound going to come back to you the best, or and how it's going to work for the audience. Have have people listen to you? You know, practice that being in that. Space. Yeah, if you practice in a in a in, in your bedroom, that's not where the performance is. But if you're in your bedroom or where if you're in your basement or your garage or in one of these rooms uh, here at the studio. You have to put yourself, okay, where am I performing this? Am I performing mm -hmm. it in a classroom? Am I performing it at my church? Am I doing something like that? And how many people might be there? Maybe you should think about that before you go and perform. Because uh, if it's going to be nine, maybe that makes you more nervous than 400. Because I know a lot of people, if there's five million people out there, they don't have a problem speaking. But if it's three... They get yeah. real nervous, about right? It. So you yeah. just have to you just have to know what the situation is. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then the next thing we were we and we really had talked about this already, but that's that's practice. And you know, I just wanted to add to the practice part of it. You know, I tell uh, a lot of my students that you know you don't have to sing to practice. You don't have to, or if you're an instrumentalist, you don't have to actually play your instrument to practice. You know. Um, as a singer, you know, practicing could just be going through the text in your head over and over and over again, getting your words down, thinking about how you're going to pronounce things, speaking it in rhythm. And you don't have to sing to do that. You don't even have to verbalize it, really. I mean, you could think it to yourself in your yeah. head. It's, that's another way to practice. And I think a lot of people think that practicing is just playing or just singing, but there's so many other ways to do it. Yeah, pretty much anytime you're spending time thinking doing researching like if you had a foreign language song mm -hmm. and you were translating it that's that's practicing it's not yeah. it's not the physical act of making the sound which is a lot of what people want to practice and they think they should uh, and it's more important on instrumentalists to make those sounds more often mm -hmm. but like I, I have kids do uh, just keyword like hey that scale sounds uneven or that passage sounds uneven why don't you just just we'll set a metronome and we'll, we'll do the fingerings together and we'll listen to the rhythm of their fingers and mm -hmm. that's practicing and it's there's lots of ways that you can do and that's why you get good instructors and you get good mentors and you can find different ways to practice because if you're super duper uber practiced those distractions like when you make a mistake you're gonna make less mistakes mm -hmm. so you'll be able to overcome more of them if you're not like if you walk into it knowing that you're not prepared First of all, you're thinking about not being prepared, and you should be in the moment. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Well, and the, like that practicing aspect, it's the way you talk about it. It's like, and I know this, but for those that don't, it's it's kind of like building blocks. You know, like you have certain building blocks and elements that it all comes together and makes the whole. But like you're saying, you know, you they they just practice the fingerings on their instrument. They don't have to blow into it or make the sound. It can just be moving their fingers around with a metronome. It could be like saying the rhythm out loud. It could be pronouncing the words or just speaking through the text. It was really hard for me on my senior recital when I had to memorize those pieces of music, but I had to, I, I like instead of being able to just speak through it in rhythm, I think you told me, you're like, just try speaking it like you would just like you're reading it. And yeah. I couldn't do it. And to me, I was like, oh no, I'm not ready because I can't do this. Like I, I must not know it that well. So find every facet that you need to, that you need to correct or and like think of every way you could possibly do it and yeah. practice every little way. And that's when you know you're ready. Yeah. So. Well, that's where it's important to find a good teacher and a mentor because as teachers, you know, we're, we're trained to help you break things down. Okay. So you've yeah. got, you've got this, this, this performance that you want to do, but there's all these components of the performance where we've done the performances we know all these different components and we can help break them down for you and help you to practice yeah. individual things. And, and, and a lot of it is if you're, if you're less experienced, the more experienced person is going to be able to see real quick. You're going to have issues here. You're going to have issues here. Mm -hmm. This stuff's easy for you. Don't practice that as much because right. it's easier. Uh, get the stuff that's a little more stressful, a little more technical and get, get, get going with that. Do you think there's such thing as over practicing? 
I know I totally threw you a curveball there because it was not on our list. But you no, know, we actually kind of talked about this with the whole adrenaline thing and how leading up to a performance, oh, like yeah. right before it, you can practice too much and you can burn through all that. And then when you get there, you're not ready. Like mentally, yeah. you're not ready to do it. I, on that side, yes, you can practice too much. I, a brass woodwind, brass mm -hmm. has a lot of lift that has to happen. Uh, if you're a brass player and you have like an audition or you have a performance and you spend too much time with the horn on your face, you're gonna wear yourself out and then you don't have the dexterity and the strength and the stamina to do what you need to do. Woodwinds, it's a little bit less, but it, I've seen it happen. I've seen people just, they they know they're a little bit behind or they think, most of them it's just they think they're a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. So they practice, 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 and then when they get to the performance, they're let down by it. Mm. Um, and remember that when you're in a performance or as you visualize your performance, you are expecting the best run of all of the things that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you capture that in a bottle, congratulations. And you do that in one performance, congrats. But it's not gonna it's not gonna happen, happen all the time. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Either. There's yeah. always things you can improve upon. But as as far as practicing too much, I I, I don't think you can. Like it like I spent 75 hours this month practicing. I think that's fine. It's what are you doing with the practice? Because I think inefficient practice is, is different than efficient practice. If you're yeah. practicing 75 hours and it's efficient, you're going to be a monster at the end of that, that practice time. But if you're just practicing the same thing over in the exact same way, nah, you're probably wasting your time. And you, yeah, that you can't yeah. practice too much. And then you get yeah. it too ingrained and you can't change it. I was always told like, you know, practice makes perfect, practice makes perfect. Well then later on in my master's degree, I heard practice makes permanent mm -hmm. because it's a lot of it's muscle memory. Like mm -hmm. anything you do musically is a lot yeah. of it's just muscle memory. And so mm -hmm. if you keep practicing those mistakes, that's what your brain's gonna tell you to do. It's gonna, you're, you're gonna repeat those mistakes all over again and it's not gonna be what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like you were saying, efficient practice is really important. Per permanence is great but dangerous right mm -hmm. because if, right. You, if you have permanented the wrong thing it's so hard to flip flop out of it's like right. a bad habit chewing your fingernails or smoking or whatever it's hard to get out of that yeah uh, <laughs> yeah okay sorry don't smoke <laughs> we don't condone that either on the show okay yeah. anyway sorry off topic anyway, no it's just on topic yeah and you know and another thing that you can do and most of these we've been talking to have been what you can do prior to a performance um but you know things like just staying hydrated you know uh getting sleep making sure you're rested um uh, and eating healthy those i mean if you if you uh work your butt off <laughs> yeah look i eat healthy right so but if, if you work your butt off for perf you, and you uh didn't get any sleep you're not going to perform well it's just not going to happen yeah i got i, I learned from uh and this is probably because we were caffeinated all the time but my roommate in college was a brass player and he kept a Hershey bar in his case and I was always told you don't you don't eat when you play and I'm like why you got a Hershey bar in there and he goes every once in a while I get I get cotton mouth or dry mouth and chocolate makes you salivate so he'd pinch off a half one of those things and he'd eat it and that would help him salivate and really? it, would, it would kick hmm. his kick his cotton mouth yeah and I was like oh uh, that made total sense to me and then the next time of course every time I had a piece of chocolate I'm like yeah, this makes me salivate. <laughs> you know, so it, okay, Pavlov. You can do all yeah. <laughs> you can do all those kinds of things. Uh, and don't just you can't just uh, drink hydration if you if you're into this and a lot of people are into that. It can't just be that day. Hydration mm -hmm. is like a weeks long yeah. to keep it in control. Um, Constant. It's a good habit to be in. I mean, yeah, that's um, a good permanent. It's a struggle. You got to get away from those. Get away from soda and coffee and because. That caffeine is a dehydrator. So, oh yes. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, he he's got a couple of things on here about while you're in the act of performing. Mm -hmm. um, he's got specifically if you have trouble with the room, if you know you're going to be in a room and the audience is going to be in the dark, that is a different experience than mm -hmm. if the audience you can see every face that's in the room. Um, most times, if you're in a recital hall, they're gonna they're gonna dim the lights and you're gonna have the bright lights on you. If you're performing in a church or you're performing at a funeral or you're doing something for your family, everybody's there. And you, yeah. some things that you can do, some people that big dark void is very comforting and some it's like not. 
and it yeah. all depends on how you how it's you how you personal. go through it. But if you have people, I'm always impressed by performers that uh, can look audience members in the eye while they're performing, especially yeah. singers. Mm -hmm. Like I'm blown away by that. I think that's really cool because that that puts them on a level where they're they're so into it. That's a connection. Yeah. Yeah. But that's really hard to do yeah. because yeah. you're thinking so hard you can't like mm -hmm. let yourself get out of that mindset. It's almost like you have to glaze over mm -hmm. and just Yeah. Well, and that's and what I have note here to talk about is that, you know, if if you focus um, right on the right behind your audience, just pick a spot on the wall, right above their heads, they'll think you're looking at them. It'll look yeah. like you're looking at them. And that's a good trick, you know, if it really freaks you out, you know, to make eye contact with somebody while you're you're singing or playing your instrument, you know, then that's that's something that's easy that you can do. Uh, you probably don't want to pick one spot and just stay there the whole time because that's going to look weird. So yeah. pick those three three imaginary people uh, and look <laughs> right above their head. Right above <laughs> <you know? laughs> but that that's that's a great that's a great tip. I think that's 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 wonderful. And uh, if you're reading music, that's also a, a way that you can kind of you can sink right into your, your yep. score and then you don't have to pay attention to anything else. You're cheating yourself that way, but if that gets you through that performance so you can see what happens mm -hmm. and later on you can get away with that because you have to enjoy that moment when you're performing. It's such a special a special thing. Yeah. So every once in a while if you need to focus in, that's cool, but uh, notice what you're doing because it's, it's really... Anybody who performs is, is special. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and focus on the positives. You know, don't... And we talked about this already, but don't let those, if like if you make a mistake, don't let it snowball. Think about all the good things you did. You know, it's it's so easy to let one bad thing just overshadow yes. every good thing that we do. Yeah, yeah. always, all, it, 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 it's, it takes some training, but if, you, if you're if you focused on the next thing you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and the thing you're supposed to do, you're gonna have a lot of success. If you're focused on things that have already happened, you're, you're one, you're wasting your time. Because uh, yeah. time is the only thing that keeps going and ain't gonna stop. So if it's already happened, try to be done with it and focus on the thing or the next thing, and that'll 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 keep you in a good place. Stay yeah. ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always, yeah. Well, do you guys have anything else that you think we ought to share about this topic? Or I'm I good. I, don't know. I think we're good. If you ever need any other of the world's problems solved, <laughs> these are the two to contact all the time. So no matter what, doesn't matter what the problem is, just Ooh. contact them. Um, we really appreciate you coming oh, in tonight. Yeah, for sure. I'm so glad. Us. I'm so glad to be here. It's awesome. <laughs> if you have, if you have any like questions or comments or things you want to share or add, um, please feel free to post in the comments section. Um, as always, if you're looking for lessons or you need advice on maybe coping with performance anxiety or you're just looking to take lessons for the first time as a beginner or refine your skills, please give us a call today. We are we have plenty of spaces available for new students of all ages and all abilities. Um, we're really excited to, to have this space and we'd love to share it with you. So, um, and we have some fabulous instructors who would love to, to take time and work with you. So, um, like, share, subscribe on all the things, social media, um, follow us on Facebook. We're, we're always looking for new faces and we're always excited and do a little happy dance whenever we get somebody to, to join, to join our little club. So, yeah. um, and other than that, I, again, once again, I thank you for being here and we appreciate your time and have a great Good Monday night. night.